What do you think? What do you think? You like it? Are you even remotely interested? You wish it was a phaser too, don't you? Back to Secret Weapons, and today we are talking about the R1 High Fidelity Stereo Reverb from Walrus Audio. Before we jump into this review, I want to disclose one thing, and that is I was a part of the beta testing team for this pedal. Um, I kind of helped troubleshoot and speak into some of the sound design of some of the algorithms on this thing. Uh, I also created all of the presets that ship on this pedal, so I just want to kind of make my bias and involvement known before we start talking about this pedal, so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, I don't have any financial investment in this pedal. I'm not being paid to make this video, uh, but I just wanted to be very upfront about kind of my background here. And so you know kind of where I'm coming from. So with that being said, let's talk about this pedal. The R1 is the newest offering from the Mako series, uh, Walrus Audio's digital stereo kind of big box killer series, I would call it. Um, their first offering being the D1 last year, a phenomenal stereo delay pedal that I did a review of on this channel. And here we have the R1, the latest offering, uh, a multi-engine, really robust stereo reverb from the same line with a few marked improvements over the D1. So when we talk about improvements, what am I talking about? Uh, number one, if you saw my D1 video, you'll know that I made a note of wishing that more of the algorithms had been in stereo versus mono delay lines with stereo modulation. Uh, this pedal takes that idea and runs with it. Everything on here is massively stereo in really, really impressive ways. Huge images that just sweep through and make great use of the space. And the only other real marked change and improvement I would say about this pedal over the D1 being completely different effects is the inclusion of a USB port on the side of the device for firmware updates, which I think is very, very helpful. And I'm very glad to see included on these new devices. So I don't wanna eat up a lot of time talking through just the features on this pedal. Uh, I just wanna highlight a couple of key things, talk through the algorithm and then we'll get to some sound samples. So let's talk about the reverb modes on this pedal. Any good big box killer, and I honestly feel like this is what this is, uh, needs a good mix of standard reverbs and weird reverbs. And this thing does standard and weird very, very well. You have six algorithms on this thing. The first three being kind of those real world algorithms, a spring, a hall, and a plate all three of which sound incredibly convincing, can be dialed to feel like the very true to life counterpart to what they represent, or stretched into something much more experimental and interesting and ambient. Uh, and then on the back half, you have the BFR, the refract, and the air. Very, very wild, experimental reverb algorithms. They tend to lean more ambient, they tend to lean more kind of droney, but they all bring something very unique to the table. And that's actually another kind of marked improvement, I would say, in terms of Walrus Audio's approach to sound design on this pedal over the D1, is the D1 sounds were incredible and crisp and incredibly articulate and all very um, kind of straightforward. 
the reverse on it was, it's one of my favorite reverse algorithms I've ever played, but it's probably also the weirdest algorithm on that pedal. The BFR, the refract, and the air all get progressively more out there to the extent that I don't think I've heard any other pedal bring something like refract or air to the table. The BFR is kind of your like somewhat standard fare, pad, reverb, ambient. Uh, you could compare it to the cloud or the black hole. It's kind of like your worship verb. But then you have refract, which has this kind of granular glitchy effect to it, takes your input signal and chops it up and plays it back in these interesting ways spread way out in the stereo field. And finally, you have the air algorithm, which aside from being a very well-engineered shimmer reverb, has this added aspect of kind of this breezy, hissy, almost white noisy air thing that comes with the reverb that moves through the stereo space incredibly well. Honestly, it's probably the reverb algorithm that I have spent the most time with in my time with this pedal so far, just because that sweeping swooshing sound is very, very cool. And when you dial it in right, can create a really amazing non-melodic texture to what you're playing. That side is also really, really heavily uh, heightened by one of my favorite features on this pedal, which is the swell control right here. Um, there's a lot of pedals that do a reverb swell. There's a lot of pedals that will do a reverb swell that affects your dry tone. But I am not familiar with any reverb pedals that do dry swell that don't sum your input signal to mono beforehand. The ability to swell everything in your signal from this pedal and not have everything that came before it summed to mono is stand out on this pedal. It might exist elsewhere, I haven't seen it. And I find that it does wonders to creating big dramatic moments. And it's especially, especially impactful considering you actually have like a little bit of a secret feature on this thing, which is if you hold down bypass and turn this X control, you can actually adjust the stereo width of the pedal to take it from noon, which is kind of that standard wideness, all the way clockwise to a really, really almost comically big sound. Uh, sounds like refract and air benefit very heavily from that weirdness. Now, don't get me wrong, you still have all the standard fair stuff that you need on a pedal like this. You have your modulation rate and depth, you have your pre delay, you have your low and high controls separate for each algorithm, which I find to be very, very helpful with how different these different sounds can be. This thing gets weird in ways that not a lot of pedals I own do, but it does it in a way that I find to be very, very important, which is with respect to the big stereo image that you want out of a pedal like this. My big issue with a lot of granular pedals is I don't like granular stuff in mono. My big issue with a lot of texture pedals is I want it to have that width, and this thing does that so, so well. So. Rather than continuing to talk about it, let's move straight over to some of the sound samples. Okay, so let's walk through everything that's on the board really quick. We're not gonna use everything, but I at least want you to kind of like have the proper context. So we are starting with my Fender Mustang, going into the 1981 DRV, the Empress Compressor Mark II, the Chase Bliss Benson Preamp Mark II, the Maris Enzo, the Cooper and Chase Bliss Audio Generation Loss, the Chase Bliss Therme and Gravitas, the Microcosm, the Strymon Volante, the Strymon Iridium, and then finally into the R1 going into our DAW. What we're mostly going to use as our kind of core dry tone here is going to be the, the Empress Compressor, the Benson Preamp, the Chase Plus Audio Gravitas, and the Strymon Iridium set to the Fender mode. This is what that sounds like with no wet effects. <laughs> So you can hear the, the, the gravitas is turned way down in terms of the depth. So it's mostly just being used for its clean boost, which I really, really like. So the way I want to run through the way I want to run through the R1 is going to be by starting with the kind of left side and moving to the right side. The left side being more traditional real world reverb, spring, hall, and plate. And then we'll go to the right side, the BFR, the refract, and the air mode. So let's start things off with a really basic, straightforward plate mode. Thank <laughs> you. 
great about this plate mode is you can really get almost otherworldly with it if you really crank the thing, um, which is great. I love, I love plates that kind of get into that realm of being super unrealistic, but for fun. Speaking of kind of like being able to craft this into a very otherworldly plate sound, um, one of the really cool tricks that the R1's got is very flexible stereo widening. So here, let's just let's latch onto something and then and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we're holding on to this plate mode right here, and then I can hold down the bypass. Once it starts blinking you can start changing how wide or narrow that is. So there's basically in mono, out to your standard width the pedal is kind of programmed to be, and then pushed way out to the outer limits there. So now, when you hit some notes, you'll hear that super wide, kind of bizarre plate sound. Let's add a little bit of modulation to kind of weird up this plate a little bit more. Put something like the hologram in front of it just to really showcase how bizarre this thing can get. Maybe a little bit of reverb. I just, I'm, I'm always so happy when you can take a plate reverb and make it a full on like ambient marvel. Okay, I promise we're not gonna go that deep on every single one of these algorithms, but I really like the plate in this thing, and I think it's fun. Uh, here's a great example of another thing I really like about this pedal, we talked about it earlier, is that preset spillover. So let's hit a big moment and then switch to the hall. Seamless transition, so useful. I think that having that that uh, that preset spillover functionality is so helpful. So it's only got one iteration of it. So if you if you hit that uh, that moment, switch to a new algorithm, and then switch again, you'll kill it. You, you'll kill the, the 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 one two algorithms ago. But uh, but in terms of like quick switches, it's really really seamless. Okay, X here is your room size. So it's Let's get rid of all the other ambient stuff really quick and kind of start from scratch here. Small room. Big room.
And this one will bring in that pre-delay pre a little bit. I'm a really, really picky person when it comes to reverb pre-delays. I find that very often I don't want any. Uh, or if I do, it has to be that exact right thing where it comes in very smoothly. And I'm really impressed with the pre-delay on this one for that exact reason. It can get a little wonky when you really max it out. Even then, it's not bad, though. I find that that like, little bit is pretty, pretty excellent. Once again, seamless transition. This is actually a halfway decent spring too. I'm, I don't really like spring reverb. This is one of the few that I've really kind of like found that I can get some use out of, which I really appreciate. It's a little, obviously it's, it's a little bit helpful with some other wet stuff for the way I play. Let's just crank it and see how weird we can make this spring as well. So we have our room control almost at zero. We have no reverb on the microcosm and we have no spring reverb coming through on the volante. We're getting all of our reverb just from the R1 and just on the spring mode. You can hear that. spring. Okay, so let's switch over to the side of the pedal that I really enjoy. Uh, the right side of this pedal is all of the kind of like otherworldly experimental ambient stuff. Uh, we're going to start with the BFR. And this is where I'm going to start introducing things like the swell control on this thing, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. And I think that the BFR is one of the places that it's kind of the most useful as far as auto swells go. So let's set our rate and depth nice and low. So we're just hearing the reverb. Keep that pre-delay in that similar vein. And let's start with just like decay and mix at noon. Bring the low up a little bit. I tend to like to roll off the highs on ambient reverbs. And then the X factor on this is the level of diffusion. So if we take it all the way down, at the very start you'll hear a lot of those like multi-tap delays that kind of like skitter around. So, and then on the other side, very smooth, very airy. It's pretty great. Okay, let's hear how it sounds. bring in that swell.
Okay, one of the things that I love the most about the swell mode on this is that you aren't summing to mono in order to do it, which is a huge deal to me. Uh, if you go back and watch like my Mercury 7 review, you'll notice that one of, the, one of my critiques of that pedal, which is an amazing pedal, is um, that when you activate the swell, it sums your input signal to mono. And that's not the case here. So let's turn on all the big wide stereo delay heads for the Volante. Listen to all of those cool that big stereo ping pong effect. Let's bring this in. And it's all still there. features on this pedal. And you can use that stereo widening to really add some intensity and some kind of wide soundscapey drama to that. Okay, let's jump over to uh, the refract mode, which I think is one of the most interesting aspects and the most off the beaten path aspects of this pedal. Um, the refract mode, let's kill the delay really quick. You can already hear from right there, it's a very kind of like bizarre, otherworldly sounding reverb. But what it is, is it's, a, um, it's, a re it's, a, it's an ambient reverb that uh, grabs onto your input signal, samples it, and then kind of redistributes those samples as kind of like granular chunks. So uh, you've got rate and depth to control the behavior of that sampling and those, and those granules. And the X factor is the amount of it in the reverb. And this is also a good spot to go back and play with that stereo widening, because this is where it's maybe the most potent and the most interesting. Oh, this is also uh, a spot where the swell, I think, is one of the most valuable aspects of this pedal. Um, when I was putting together the presets for this, uh, for this, this device, 
Uh, one of the only spots where I really mess with the stereo image on the presets that this thing ships with is on this refract mode because I think that these big wide swells with those kind of glitchy reverse pieces are really interesting. Ah, such a fun reverb. Okay, and let's close things out with the, with, with the air algorithm, which once again has a like really bizarre, interesting thing that I am very, very enamored with, which is this swooshy, uh, almost like white noisy kind of thing that's added in that I just find so cool and so interesting. A good reminder is if you're going from a refract mode to another algorithm, I recommend that you recheck your rate and depth settings because you tend to push them really aggressively to get that really cool refract sound. And then when you jump to a new algorithm, you can kind of end up with like really heavily modulated trails if you're not paying attention to it. There it is. So you have this kind of like big stereo sweeping air sound and an octave up, which actually sounds really good. It's a, it's a very good shimmer. I do wish there was a way to do this without that shimmer and to get all of that white noise, but you can kind of tame a lot of that with your, with your high control. Once more, we're going to talk about how good the swell is here. Very good for soundscapey stuff right now.
with that swell activated, the octave almost feels like kind of like an organ. Thank mm-hmm. you.